If that would cause me to order, I'd rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> She's having any trouble. Okay, well, hopefully she made it home safely. I know she was on her way and had to turn around for the bad roads. So we'll uh, hope that she's home and maybe just having some trouble getting on. If you do see her join, maybe let us know and we can go further to the discussion. Uh, so with that, we'll move to uh, item 104, approval of the agenda. It is recommended that the agenda for the February 2nd, 2021 work session be approved as presented. So moved. Okay, uh, all in favor, signify by aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So with that, uh, we'll move into uh, the purpose of the work session tonight, uh, as advertised again, was uh, to identify potential next steps and any other matters relative to the ongoing, uh, say in quotes, mascot discussion. Um, we'll say that, uh, again, we're looking for a positive, respectful, open discussion this evening uh, in an effort to identify those next steps. Each member will have an opportunity to speak and just want to remind everybody of the principles of governance and leadership, as well as our board norms, that we listen to each other, to listen to our colleagues without interruption, gestures, or expressions. And I just ask that we try to keep it positive and student focused. So with that, um, is there anybody who'd like to volunteer to, to start the discussion on what they see as potential next steps or where they would like to start the discussion this evening? So I'll start with me and just go around. Sure. Well, very briefly, and I'd like to revisit it as people speak if you might mind. Um, I believe we need to continue some of the presentation format. It doesn't have to be extensive. It can be online, it can be in person, but I'm also willing to have contributions of pieces that could be on our website for linkage. So in other words, YouTube videos, um, resolutions, links to various groups that may support one side or the other. Um, the more information that all of us can look at, the better. Recent emails would indicate that I believe we need to have this discussion regardless of the outcome because I believe that the community is a bit confused as to what education is for all of our students. And so anyway, I don't want to, I don't want to dive into details of, you know, the conversations, but at some point, I think we need to establish an end to the discussion and what we may see as perhaps a date sometime. It doesn't have to be discussed tonight, but sometime here in the near future, how, at what point. I, I believe we need to continue the discussion number one. Um, and at some point in the not too distant future after we either seen articles, or YouTube videos, even if we see them as a 
as a group, and then perhaps have a discussion on those even. I would like to suggest that we not have videos that are extremely long, that would take an hour or so to watch, and then we could limit that to 15 minute videos or something. And, but I just believe that the community also needs to be educated because this is for all of our students, the conversation, because it, it can reflect The final decision can reflect negatively on whichever or all groups of students. I'll leave it at that. Okay. I like a lot of the stuff that, that Rod was uh, talking about there. Um, in addition, um, we are going to be open presenting a resolution the next meeting, John. Res presenting a resolution at the next meeting um, focusing on religion, diversity, equity, and other things. Um, and using that as a guiding uh, principle for the way that we should be proceeding. Um, I feel that some of the stuff that we have come up and we've been discussing falls within the remit of that. Um, resolution and how we should be should be handling things um, that we should be. Mark, yes. if I can interrupt you just real quick, I see Mrs. Weaver's on there. Let me get her on the record as being in, in attendance. Okay. Okay. Make sure she can hear. Mrs. Weaver, can you? I see, I see you're rushing. Glad you're home safe. Yeah. <laughs> she have trouble too. You're muted. Yeah, she turned around. But yeah, sorry. I, I'm here. I'm really bad roads in Spring Township, and then I couldn't get up my hill, so it took me 20 minutes to get up my hill. We, we were concerned, so we're glad you're home. <laughs> so we just wanted to check you in for being in attendance and join the discussion, okay? Yep, thank you. Okay, thank you. Sorry for the interruption. No, no, you, you're fine. So, yeah, as I say, using, using the resolution, the principles of that, that resolution, the guiding principle, how we're going to this move forward. Um, but furthermore to this, it's whatever we decide on, we've got to find something that everyone can agree on. We can't have something that's, that's divisive in nature um, that we agree on here. Um, there's enough um, divisiveness around that we don't want this to carry on. Uh, it is, I think it's absolutely imperative that we get the, the voices of uh, the students involved in so far we've not had a lot of the students involved in, in our discussion before we find out um, what they are thinking and how they want to be included in, in what we're doing. Um, we're doing that on the IDE committee. We should be seeing something on that next week. We have our next meeting, so be curious and see how that goes. If we could link something together, but for now, I'll say, okay. um, I, I agree with Mark in terms of the student voice. I think it's very necessary that we, as a school board, we're representatives of our community, we're representative of our students, we're representative of our staff. I think it's necessary that we include all parties, um, and, and that. That stems from we don't want anything divisive. Um, so I really think that it is our job and it is our responsibility to continue to involve all members, all people who have um, who have a, an interest in in this district, who pay taxes, who attend our schools, who live in our community. That we move forward together, not apart. We don't. I know in the emails we've gotten, we've gotten emails that said, you know, as a school board, we we move forward without community you know, input or stuff like that. We don't want to be seen as that. Um, we don't do that. Um, so I think it's important that as we move forward, we move forward educating not only ourselves as a board, but also, as Rod said, we educate the community. We all move forward together. Um, and, and in part, I think, um, I know I've gotten a lot of, I've had people talk to me 
what I'd like to see in the future is at least some count, some like of each building, how many representations there are of the Native American mascot in our buildings and maybe what the cost is to, to replace that. I'm not saying that that's what my final decision would rest on, but I think people would like to at least just see that, what, what the cost would be. And, and really, I think as we know the cost, we know how to make steps forward. Um, but that's beside the point. I think that as we go through this process, we just need to continue to engage the community in these sessions where we have presentations, where we, we learn, we get different inputs, we get different perspectives. So, so that's, that's kind of, I think, my idea for a path moving forward is if we have other presentations, we have little informational sessions so that everyone can kind of be on the same page, that the board's not moving at a faster pace than the community and people think they're getting left behind. That we're, all, we're all going forward together and we all have the same information before our hands. So everyone can kind of know what perspective we're going to be making a decision from and know that their voice is heard no matter who they are, no matter what they do. Thank you, Max. Uh, Mr. Steiner? At the IU meeting last week, uh, we're looking into it, something that was still being investigated. We had uh, a couple of representatives for architectural They both did, but one more than the other. Spoke to the current climate relative to uh, capital projects and schools. What we delayed was that uh, the moment Prices for materials are a little high, but they anticipate that's going to turn around in the next couple of months. But that the bids that are being made are very um, favorable to the school district because all these folks need to just keep their people working. Um, and they believe that that's going to be the case for the next year. And this is a firm that these are, they're actually working in these things. Contracts being signed, checks are being written. And that really struck me um, because, uh, you know, we got about a year and a half, we got kicked off track when we were like an architect. Uh, but then over the, the last year going on now, um, of course, COVID slowed things down. And, and you know, it had been mentioned, though, it had been months since we had talked about this. But we had special sessions in November and October about this. I don't know that anyone has brought up anything about the elementary school since last summer. And I, you know, that's something I'm really struggling with here because that's something that is of much greater import to the entirety of our district. Um, and this board just completely, uh, you know, while we continue to move forward, we push forward on this, something that's just much more consequential to the district uh, has just been let go. Um, I do know that there was a poll in September with the students at the high school that the right, right white did, uh, and the poll came back where 71% of the students at the high school who responded just wanted to keep the low. I think that is reflective of obviously our students, I think it's reflective of our staff. Not every single person, I think the overwhelming majority of people just want to let this go, and our community as a whole. That's where it's at, you know, and so. This weekend, um, one of these moments you get where something's going on. I got to look at my phone, right? I, I, I looked on Facebook, the Lock Haven Express article about tonight at 10. And the response reverberating from Benner, from Belfont, from Pleasant Gas, from Walker was not this S H I T, right? That's what people were saying. The people were looking at this board mid pandemic. Are staff burdened by everything that they need to do trying to keep education for our students going and everyone is so beat up over the pandemic 
and this winter was just miserable. And, I, you know, I can't go along to get along on this for this morning. Because this board is so extraordinarily out of line with its community relative to this issue. You know, I think the option should be very clearly to just let this go. The community doesn't want it to begin with. You don't need it now. It's burdensome to everyone right now, unnecessarily. And just by doing this, it's the vice like that that sweet spot since the, the December through January of the holidays and all of this and this went away. This is one thing that people in our community weren't stressed about. And just this meeting by being tonight is increased stress and pressure on everyone within this district. So I, I, I would ask that people consider us just flat coming. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Ms. Smith? <clears throat> so I guess I will um, start with the original question that was posed to us uh, before this meeting occurred is, should we discuss this? So I got a few uh, thoughts together and the following points I would like to make about why I respectfully disagree with respect why I believe we should discuss it. <clears throat> so excuse me if I go back a little bit. So the issue is thrust upon us. This Donna, yeah. is there any way you can talk louder? I'm having a really hard time hearing you guys. Yep. Can you take my mask? Yeah, and if the speaker needs to take their mask okay, off to hear better, that's fine. Sure. So the issue was thrust upon us this summer. Um, as I was taking my walk, I got a phone call, and my first reaction was, no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. This is a hornet's nest, and I would just like to not pick it, and I would really like, like it to go away. Uh, this was divisive 25 years ago, and I doubt that it has improved with time. However, six or seven months have passed, and the issue still remains. Is it our job to pass it off again, or do we have the courage? And we personally fail to tackle this issue. And I do think that we need to have the courage to tackle this issue. My second point why we should discuss it is and again, I'm going to use a personal uh, example. My kids are grown, but when they were teenagers, if one of them had said to me, Mom, I would like a car. And if my answer was, we're not even going to discuss it, that means nobody's getting a car. So I think by not discussing it, we're automatically saying we can't, we don't even have an option to look at those sides. My third reason is, and I've heard this from a number of emails that we've all gotten, is we can't talk about this now because of COVID. And that is legitimate. COVID is very important. However, we have meetings twice a month. And at each of these meetings, we do talk about other issues. It isn't just COVID. We deal with policy, legislation, our budget, our physical building. We approve courses and our curriculum. We don't just talk about the pandemic, we talk about it plus other things. So to say that we can only be talking about the pandemic and we can't talk about anything else is simply, that's just not the case. Now today I had the opportunity to sit in on a uh, county commissioner's meeting. And they of course talked about the pandemic, COVID, along with other things. So the world has not stood still, and I believe that, that the pandemic is an issue, but life moves on, and we have to talk about, about those other issues as well. My next reason for at least discussing this is, as Mark said, we are in the process of adopting a diversity, equity, and inclusion resolution, and to not include this along with that simply makes no sense. So, um, Another reason is we said we would talk about it. We said earlier in the year that we didn't want to jump into anything rashly, but that give us some time and we need to fulfill what we said we were going to. 
Um, a couple other things, I, I don't want to take the floor too long, but I think it's also important to think about a compromise. I think that it doesn't have to be completely throwing the baby up with the bathwater. I see a very clear and easy path for a compromise that I think would make both sides um, relatively happy. And I also would like to just state on record, it doesn't have to involve a large impact to the budget. Any decision that we make now or in the future, we can do so responsibly because that is one thing that we all have been working our tails off, and that is to keep the tax rate down as, as much as we could. So there's also the option of just phasing things out without costing anyone any more money. So I, I would personally never vote for anything that's going to cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars. There is no way. And I think that I just need to make that clear for, from my perspective. And I will just conclude <clears throat> with these two other things. Um, we had a presentation by Dr. Lopez and by um, Chief Red Hawk Walter Brown, and both of them suggested that our next step should involve talking to the local Native American indigenous population in our community, the, the voting members are, the people who walk our streets and shop in our stores and go to our schools. Is this appropriate? And if not, what can we do better? And we, I would really like to see the people who have offered their services. We reached out to people from Virginia and Washington, as in state of, but what about our local people? Because we're all good people. We, Belfond is a wonderful community, and this is why I think all of us ran, because we like living here. We love and revere our school district. If there was something that happened to a student in, in my classroom, everybody just jumps on board and would have given money or a home or transportation or food or anything. And we need to remember that we, at the end of the day, we care about each other and we need to get along. And we need to, I think, move forward, but um, because we said we would, and at the end of the day, think about we could have a compromise, and I think it's something we could all agree on. Well, I diverted from that, but <laughs> I'm off my soapbox now. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you, is always a tough act to follow. Yes. Because <laughs> I talk for a little bit. No, but you're very eloquent. I, mean, I would pretty much echo everything Donna said. Um, I do want the discussions to continue. I do want to have student input. Um, you know, there are people that feel very strongly on both sides, and that's good. That's But we want to have productive conversations. Um, again, we can handle more than just the COVID. And I, for one, cannot speak highly enough about our administration who has done a tremendous job with keeping our schools open and everyone is working hard. Teachers, students, Tammy, just unbelievable. And we're still able to accomplish other things very similar to what Donna had said. Um, I think a compromise is the best way to go. I don't think it should be one way or the other. It's not cut and dry. Um, there are compromises out there. You're never going to please everyone all the time. Um, but I think there is a way to come to some kind of compromise. Um, what I would like to, to look at is saying, you know, kind of having an end date similar to what Rod had said is saying, you know, we'll have these conversations, but by this date, you know, we want to make a decision, whatever the decision is, but kind of have an, an ending in mind saying we're not just going to continue on and on and on until whatever. <laughs> so, but that's all. Thank you. Um, I echo a lot of what has been said, and so I don't want to re repeat all of that, but I certainly think we have come this far with this, and, and I think that it's clear that for 25 years, this has been an issue that rears its head probably every three to five years. Um, and so if there is a way that we can come to some consensus about how to address this, 
So it's not something that takes up time in another three years or another five years. But this is not something that's new. It's been here. I mean, it's like it, it comes up and, and gradually over time, the district has been addressing this. Um, and I think that there's still more there. Uh, and I, I do like Donna's suggestion of um, what we learned from Dr. Lopez's um, pres presentation and Mr. Um, Villaloo and, and Chief Redhawk, um, that having, you know, some voices from the Native American community and, and understanding um, their perspective on this and, and how we might be able to um, honor their heritage, our Native American heritage in this area, and, and, and appropriate ways that we can do that, I, I think that that um, would be a great presentation to understand that a little bit better. Um, I, I caution on the word of compromise only in so far as um, what that means to some people. <laughs> but I definitely think that um, there are ways that we can be proud of Belfont, show our Belfont pride, and also honor our Native American history. I think there are many ways that we can do that. Um, so I, I think that um, people have to be open to that. But I, I really did like Rod's idea of um, being able to share some other resources and other material that's out there and trying to show different perspectives so that we can um, continue to learn on this. I know that the, our first, our work session that we had in November, I, I think, I know that I took some different takeaways from that and learned from that and um, continue to learn. So I think that having some additional presentations and I'd like to hear, you know, some people have mentioned some already. I know one that I'm really interested in is trying to understand a little bit better about how um, um, the, how we may look at this in terms of um, either creating positive stereotypes of a culture um, within our either our curriculum or our practices um, and how we might be able to do that. Um, and, and if we don't, if, if it's, you know, a lot of experts say that it's a negative stereotype that we are reinforcing, um, what's the impact of that? What, what happens with our students? What do our students learn from that? Uh, and how is that helping them to be um, you know, culturally aware and culturally sensitive uh, and um, in leaving and being the, what we talk about in our resolution, being the global ambassadors, uh, you know, of Belfont. And so um, that's, that's an area that I'm really interested in, the educational impacts, both not only on um, a marginalized population, but also on our majority population as well and the impacts there and trying to understand how we can um, create more positive um, imagery, more positive associations. Um, and like I said, I mean, this is, this, this has been, been going on for a long time. <laughs> and so I think, I think as Donna said, I think we have the opportunity to approach this in a way in which we're listening and hopefully, hopefully learning and growing together and finding a way that we, um, can uplift a culture and also impact our students' education at the same time. I think that's mostly what I had. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Weaver. Oh, thank you. I agree with a lot of what was said. I do agree though with what, a lot with what Jeff had said so moving forward, I do know that as much as I agree with what Jeff says, I also know that the majority of the board wants to move forward with discussion. So that's fine too. But I also think that we have to be very diligent in allowing our community to be as involved as possible in this because we are elected by our community. So we need to hear everybody. 
And right now in COVID times, we're limited to our numbers and that kind of thing. And it is harder virtually as I sit here, um, as I sit here and you all sit there. But um, I do believe that we have to make sure that we are giving do, doing due diligence to our community and letting them talk as well in at all of our presentations and presenting it. Um, I agree with compromise or whatever word you would want to use. I know compromise is definitely very different in everybody's mind, but it is about give and take um, because it doesn't matter what side I stand on, I'm willing to do give and take. And seeing as how our country is divided now, I certainly don't want to see that in our community. And as I stated before, depending on how this is handled, it could be a very, very divided community and not be pretty for us. Um, but I really, I'm not gonna keep reiterating everything what everybody else said. So, but I don't have any suggestions as to what is the best approach to move forward or which would be next. But I also am not 100% sure that we also have to put a timeline or an actual date, like, August 10th is when we're making the decision. I think that kind of pigeonholes yourself into it. I think that we have to kind of let the discussions kind of guide us. And as we see things maybe coming down, then you look at maybe, okay, this is where our, this is where we want to narrow it down to. But that's pretty much it. Thank you. So I'll uh, just start by saying that uh, I'm kind of trying to look forward as to what the next steps would be. And uh, to hit a few buzzwords that we've all heard time and time again, I do think we're all sort of bouncing around the same idea of moving forward in a way that educates uh, our community, our students, our board, uh, in a way that sets an example for others that are in this similar situation. And I. I remain hopeful that there is some solution out there that will get us to that point. Um, as far as steps forward and, and uh, providing material, I know uh, I'm not sure if anyone here has uh, looked at the uh, Pennsylvania Human Relations Commission report or a case that was a uh, precedent that was set locally. I think that's probably something that we should put up and, and I'll read so we understand within confines legally and ethically what we should be considering or not considering. So that's probably something that I'll, I'll try to dig up that resource for folks. Um, I do think, uh, we, I don't see us moving forward without community support, obviously. And we've been, we're engaged in this meeting this evening because we've heard a lot of community input to this point. And one of the things that I see as our charge is to build consensus in the community. and having the, and I'm not trying to stereotype any discussions to, to this point, but listening to the same, I want to keep it or I want to get rid of it, I'm not sure mm -hmm. helps, the, helps the issue move forward in a productive way. So I, Julie and I had a lot of discussion and we feel that tonight was important so that we can sort of set the tone so that instead of people coming in here and, and uh, either being accusatory or talking about the past, Let's talk about the future. Let's let's put up positive proposals in potential steps forward. And I can envision uh, probably at least two meetings. Uh, we all have livelihoods that we have to keep up with. We have a regular board business that we have to keep up with. It happens every other week. Uh, I can see at least two meetings, potentially more, just dedicated solely to public input. Um, around the framework that I'm talking about now. So for anyone who is still, you know, feeling put out or not heard, please understand your time is coming, but we just have to get ahead of it enough to sort of set the tone, have these discussions and give you the idea of how we see this potentially moving forward so that we can all act productively and not in, a, in, a, in an accusatory fashion or anything like that. So I think that's important. Um, 
that could happen potentially a couple of nights in one week, so it's all fresh in our mind. Uh, but between that and, and potentially another discussion meeting, that potentially takes up an entire month. Now, we talked about a timeline before, which we did set forth, and February was sort of geared around, January was sort of presentations, February was more public input and in this type of discussion for hopefully maybe a path forward in, in the March timeframe. I don't know, like others have mentioned, I'm not sure how appropriate it is to try to nail down a date, as long as we can maybe try to get at least two or three next steps advertised so people know what to expect and when they can participate and how. Um, so I do encourage people that would want to um, offer input in the meantime, please continue to email. Forgive me if I don't answer every single email. Uh, <laughs> sometimes the tone of the email, it's maybe best if I just leave it alone for a little while. Uh, but I do appreciate everyone who is offering input. And if you, if you just need to be scathing, send me a personal email. I'll take it. It's fine. We all got to get it off our chest. I understand. But let's try to get past that and move forward uh, in a way that's, that's a little bit uh, different looking. Uh, I do think that we've had some good presentations. We've addressed some important issues. I think the IDE committee was a very good step. Uh, and by the way, I, I skipped you, I think, because I went over here. It's okay, it's okay. So you're it's okay. me. No, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. So the IDE committee was a very good uh, step. And this issue rested solely in that uh, confine. We, as a board, chose to bring it out of there and, and do what we are doing. But it, the, the two really kind of mesh. Uh, they're going to function moving forward, I think, is pretty to your point. Uh, we, through the course of our discussions and hearing what both sides of the issue felt appropriate and not appropriate, uh, the district has made some changes. I'll let uh, Mr. Burnford speak to some of those. And uh, I think we've had some very positive things with curriculum and others, but again, I'll let you talk about those. Um, I would like to see us eventually have a format where we can reach out. This isn't about just Native Americans, so I, I know that that's the, the discussion tonight. But it's part of a much bigger issue of marginalized groups. Of uh, We all sat here to begin this meeting tonight, and we all pledged allegiance to the same flag as Americans. And I've said this before, we're Americans first, and part of being an American, in my view, is learning and understanding and respecting the cultural diversity that makes up the American uh, community or people. And I think that's what we need to set the example that we are committed to learning about other groups, identifying the, the, um, the various groups that might be in our community, reaching out to them, having them uh, provide representation on any sort of committee or focus group that we have moving forward so we can understand the needs and look for positive ways to promote their culture and not give negative stereotypes. Uh, there was discussion about maybe what the next presentation could look like. You know, I had that discussion. I don't think there's one person in here that would disagree with the fact that uh, negative reinforcement could, will have negative outcomes, student outcomes. But I also don't think anyone would disagree that positive reinforcement has positive outcomes for student achievement. Uh, so, again, that's what I would like to see happen. How can we turn this into a positive that gives representation from all groups? And we've had the discussion, uh, Mrs. Berniford and I, about maybe trying to identify groups and promote a different group every month uh, within our schools and within our community so that we can learn about other cultures uh, and, and learn to respect them for the things that they do or the things that they they uh, appreciate and call their own. So that's how I, maybe it's a utopian view, maybe it's never attainable, I don't know. But uh, I've always been in that camp of, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, as you heard, you know, that's not an all or nothing. There has to be, we have to be able to come together as a community and find a way to, to move forward and, you know, not look at the color of someone's skin or, or what their hair looks like or anything else or what part of town they live in we're all just people. Uh, Ms. Smith identified earlier, when something happens to someone in this community, we pitch in, okay? Um, uh, you know, we just, I did that tonight. I was out showing someone else a sidewalk because they weren't feeling good. So that, that's the kind of stuff that we do here. It has nothing to do with anything other than being a responsible member of the community. 
That's what I would like to see moving forward. I don't know if eventually we need to work toward a focus group or a committee or whether we leave that uh, with the administration as the IDB committee. We'll be looking for feedback from that as well. Um, but somewhere we need to bring in that representation, I feel. I'll, I'll leave it at that. And uh, Mr. Barnford? I just want to touch on a few things that have been mentioned. I don't know, can you hear me? Not well. Can you hear me, Kim? Okay, I have a big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of where we are um, moving along, I know uh, the subject of looking at the curriculum and looking at education and what are we doing with our kids keeps arising. And it's come through emails and um, that idea of educating, I think is, is the part that I can pick up or at least start to pick up. Um, we have scheduled a uh, curriculum audit, uh, equity in the um, curriculum audit. Uh, we're working with Diane Yvonne from the IU. And uh, as I mentioned at the last meeting, she's focusing right now on the social studies curriculum only because it's freshly written. We will move to the other curricula whenever we can. It's a lot to try to bite off and chew right now. I will also preface by saying that there's a, a million ways we can go and there are things to do and the IDE committee is doing a great job. It is difficult to, do, to meet virtually. I feel like sometimes that we could get a whole lot more done if we could just have one night together. And so um, I think that's our struggles from my end and being a little bit slow. Um, Mr. Fitzgerald and Mr. Maris wrote a course that will be required of all of our students. It's coming to the board probably, I'd say, the March, April timeframe, um, along with some, some ideas. We also, it will run through the equity audit by then as well, too. So half the year will be spent on local history. Um, our students will be learning about the history of Belfon and learning of the, of the history of this area. And the second half of the year will be focused on um, for better lack of words, civics and being a good citizen. So um, I think both of them are very excited about the course that they've created. And I think that's the first step. Requiring all students to take that course um, is going to, we'll, we'll hit everybody with it. Um, I will also add, if you recall, Mr. Fedison talked about it. It's even in the next year's course guide. And there is a little bit of, um, an overlap and a little bit of scheduling because we've had kids move through and we're going to make it a, a mandatory, I forget which grade level, but um, so there's a little bit of glitches to get through to begin with, but it will be a course that's required um, year long for all of our students. The IDE committee continues to meet um, next Friday. We'll be looking at the larger scope, the larger lens of um, inclusion, diversity and equity. Uh, as we've talked about, there's a lot of gray sessions, a lot of things going on. So from my end, um, we're trying to move forward on that education piece the best that we can. Um, the training next Friday is also mandatory of all of our staff. And so um, we keep plugging forward in that education piece. So um, as far as um, trying to educate our students and trying to educate um, from within, quite honestly, that's the easier part. Um, I think the harder part is educating our community and working with our community. I will say this, um, I don't know whether the time is right. I don't know when the time is right, but I can tell you that I cannot, and I say it all the time, and I am not blowing smoke, say enough about this community as we've gone through COVID. Uh, parents have been fantastic. They've been supportive. They have been, um, as divisive as the mascot is, they have been absolutely the opposite when it comes to the pandemic. Um, and some people have very strong feelings about the pandemic and masks and the virus and all of those things. But um, we've come together as a community to fight the virus together. It's kept our kids in school. Um, we have teachers and staff working their hearts out. So um, I know what this community is capable of. And I guess it's your charge to lead them to. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. I do think, uh, and some other small things that we heard, um, just to pick your brain a little bit. So in the one discussion we had, uh, they kind of identified that maybe the music we were playing in the morning. Oh, correct, correct, correct. So, correct. So um, if you recall when um, she, the chief spoke and said something about um, the music that we were playing in the morning, it was okay to play that music if we had some sort of like description, like educate kids. What's that music about? What does that, what does, what does, and he did a chant for us that was really entertaining. Um, it was really interesting to me 
Um, we are not to that point yet, so we just eliminated the music in the morning um, for now. But I do like that whole idea. I know at the high school there are morning announcements for students, and I can see where we could pull that education piece into those morning announcements um, at some point too. Those are things down the road, but yes, we did eliminate the, I forgot about that, I'm sorry. That's okay. And I, I think the, the board or the district as a whole has made the, the B that's on the few of the masks in here, that is the district's official logo. Correct, that's um, on, that's on um, like uh, our crest is on the letterhead, that kind of thing. Yeah. So when we talked about, someone mentioned phasing out or things, so mm -hmm. those are just some things to consider and for people that might be looking at this later, uh, to make them aware. And I think uh, we have the crest too. Okay. The crest. We use the crest a lot and the block B a lot. And I know you've given direction to, uh, I think we used to use the logo, things that we can use to uh, say this. Places where the logo used to appear that were easily changed. You've already given that direction to, to not use that, I believe. Like uh, handbooks and things like that. Oh yeah, the, handbook just don't, a matter the, of the handbooks don't have them on. They have a block B. That, that changed before a lot of this too. I, I thought so. Yeah. yeah. So it's been sort of an ongoing. There's a, a conscientious been, effort. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, let's go back around the table again and see if anybody wants to continue. So uh, regarding the focus groups, I think that's actually something that's a result of a decision. So focus groups are normally how you're going to proceed afterwards. Does this look good? In other words, if you have an advertisement you want to get out, you have a focus group for that. If you want to, you know, let's say, retain the mascot or change something else within it, that's a focus group. Um, but it's post-decision. It's what you do after the decision is made. I want to uh, briefly revisit the idea of 71% of the students want to keep and 29% don't. I mean, that, that's what we're talking about, is we almost have a third of our student body saying that this is not reflective of us, that we consider this a bad symbol for our community. Um, so it, it brought to mind a grandparent who visited us some years ago at a board meeting, upset because his minority grandson was being bullied in the schools and um, it was very compelling. The same person I know, as opposed to even considering changing the mascot. So this is one of those things where it's whosoever ox is being bored at the moment. And so this is about minorities, like you suggested. It's about all minorities. And we have to be cognizant of the fact that that I actually am is very pleased that almost a third of our body, the student body, reflected on this in a meaningful way that got everybody considering what this may represent. So um, I want to also mention that while we may be shifting, without actual action by the board, those things can shift in a month. So if you look at the stadium, there's nothing up there that has the mask I want it to put on. Within a brief period of time, that can change. That was a deliberate effort on our parts, not only in relation to this, but also in relation to cost. Having those kinds of things is an actual, you know, it, it does cost extra money to have those things on there. Within a, a blink of the eye, there's a wrestling mat that has a huge Indian head on. I mean, if we don't take actual action that says we either want that or don't want it, those things reappear. This is the same kind of thing that happened to Radford, Radnor and other places they were phasing it out just um, through the administrative works that athletic groups can on their own bring that back. So um, 
I have some other things written down here, but I'm not so sure exactly when we should be discussing this. Um, one of the common themes whenever these kinds of issues, this particular issue, is being discussed, people always mention that we're too busy and that we're honoring them by having the mask out and all that. So that's the education. You know, are we truly honoring them? And if we are, how are we doing that? Because that's completely lost on me. So, you know, and, and I would hope that perhaps we could put together something that could, uh, you know, if we're going to have some links on our website and stuff, that we could perhaps have a, have some, Couple of people say, "Yeah, we'd like to see that on there or whatever." You know, I don't. I have a number of them that I think are very legitimate links. Just like you want to have the piece on there for the uh, Human Resources mm -hmm. Commission. Um, what was something else here? I was thinking of this. Oh, we didn't talk about cancel. Cancel culture comes up a lot. Does anybody here? know anything about the doctrine of discovery so those are the kinds of things we need to start with with the discussion of history with Pennsylvania and up through to the present day so when we're talking about the history of the Native Americans and all that we need to actually start at the very beginning and so that's in some of these YouTube videos and some of the information that I have that I would like to share. Um, it's just, we have a long way to go. I don't think we should limit these discussions always to just tonight and special nights. So we have a board meeting coming up Tuesday. Normally we're done around 8.30. If we could have like a half an hour discussion within that next meeting to continue, you know, where are we going to proceed? I would like some ideas for perhaps the, the leadership of the board as to how you would like to proceed. And I think we can draw some consensus around that, some agreement, you know, presentations or whatever we would like to see. Just discussion. Okay, so uh mrs weaver you're in the next empty seat there um i guess part of my question back though is while i i agree there's a third of the student population who do not you know like the name and i'd be curious to know why like what's their take on it why do they feel that way but I also want to remind that there's also two thirds of the population that do like the name. And in the same token, I'd like to know why do they like the name? And it goes back to, again, um, I agree. We have to go with the minor or to understand the minority groups and stuff like that. But it also still is kind of about the democracy as well. I mean, if, the students like it too, and the majority of our community like it too. We also have to respect that as well. <clears throat> and I agree with Rodney when it comes to the focus groups. I think that's more of an end product versus a right now product because the board needs to discuss this all together and then maybe break apart when we get to more of an end product. Thank you. Dr. Badger, do you have anything else? Not really. Um, I did pull up that article that spoke about this uh, that poll. Um, it was based on 300 student responses, which is, which is just one third of the student body. So is it truly representative? Is it, is it multiple, multiplied from there? So, but, but beside the point, um, 
Yeah, well, they, they just as long as we, as long as the, the continued discussions that we have have absolute merit moving forward and have some um, new material that will help us make a more informed decision that is going to be um, acceptable to us and then hopefully to the, the, the wider group, then um, absolutely we continue on that discussion and, and learning. Um, and along with everything else that we're, we're doing, I, I like some of the other ideas that come out from this. We'll bring them up to our, our folks in the ID as well to discuss. Um, I have some other things that have been holding back that were potential resources, the resources we could, but it will involve um, maybe some discussions with those people because they're reluctant at this point to get involved, but they could have some credible uh, input to, to the discussion and see how we're moving forward. So, about how, how Um, I thought Mrs. Weaver brought, brought up a very good point, um, the why of why people may or may not like it. I know we talked about compromise, and I was just kind of in my thinking. We can, I guess, come to a solution if we kind of know what it is exactly that makes people not like our imagery or what makes them like it, and see if it's something that, that we can address uh, to make, I guess, to, to sort of make that compromise more feasible, so we're not, you know, completely throwing something out or completely keeping it. We're we're kind of, we're listening and we're adapting to to what what's being, you know, um, what the what the actual issue is. I, I don't know what the issue is. I don't know um, why people may like the mask. I I mean I know you know people you know they want to keep it or they want to get rid of it. So I guess um, as as Julie said, I think a couple people mentioned that. We can't really keep the status quo. We have to find out how we can grow um, and, and adapt to something that would be more acceptable. Um, so I, I think the the why, the why, what what it is this specific issue, and how can we adapt it that we can kind of find that that middle ground. And I just kind of wanted to touch on what kind of Mrs. Smith said when we first got that email in the summer. I was like, oh no, this is a whole this is a whole thing. And I would have loved to just, you know, pass it aside and say, no, we, we shouldn't talk about it. But I don't think, as an as a elected official, as we all are, I don't think that's responsible of us. And even as an American citizen, when our neighbors are going through some trouble, most times we don't just say, no, we're not going not gonna to help you. We're not going to talk to you. We're not going to do that. You know, it, like, you meant, like John mentioned, he was out helping shovel, uh, people shovel snow. We help each other out in this community, in this country, and we talk to people. Even if it comes to a decision, we, you know, in the end, whatever we choose, we at least know that we did our due diligence. We did our responsibility as citizens of, of the United States to, to fully explore, to have those discussions as the democracy merits. So um, I think keeping this discussion, you know, going, but also, you know, uh, showing the community that we're still very much a school board. We're still working on the, the issues of curriculum. We're still going through and we're keeping the schools open. We're putting the students first, but also making sure that people in our community who feel discriminated against, we're listening to them and, and hearing every voice in our community, not just not just the majority, you know, not just saying doing what's convenient for us. Nothing worthwhile is easy. So we always hear that statement. So I, I think it's beneficial to keep Keep the discussion going but also remind the community that we are dedicated to education we're dedicated to our students we're dedicated to serving the public in, in the best capacity possible okay mr stein yeah the red and white article uh 300 respondents it was i, I would say obviously it's not a scientific poll however when you do polling for like the state of pennsylvania 1500 or 2000 people but reaches a point that you say, okay, this is pretty representative for the state of Virginia. 300 for the high school, it's representative. I would also say that 71% of the respondents agreed that it should stay the same. 17% responded they want to change. 12 reported they did not. So it wasn't that 30% wanted to get rid of people. Um, 
I'm a Democrat. I'm progressive. There are a lot of things in this country that we need to do better with acceptance and tolerance. Uh, and I'm fully supportive of a lot of those things. Uh, there was mention of the cancel culture. Um, I'm also well aware of that. I got a big problem with that. I call it for what it is when I see it. Um, and it just hit the news in the last week or so. San Francisco School Board, um, apparently, uh, somehow, they're finding uh, George Washington and Abraham Lincoln to be unacceptable uh, in their school district. I don't know exactly what they've taken down or whatnot. Um, that just, you know, we're, we're not there with this, but we are in that range moving in this regard. Um, it's, so we've had a lot of talk here today. We've had no tangible outcomes yet. I, I don't know that we're going to be able to see any kind of tangible outcomes. It's a lot of, we've got to talk more, we've got to talk more, we've got to talk more. It's irresponsible uh, and it's cruel from the perspective of the people in the community who have significant attachment to the identity of the Red Raider to keep this on a string with them. Now, people are kind of insinuating, well, you know, it, it could not be that way. I don't know. At the same time, trying to keep the door open to that possibly being the case that we eliminate. So, we're probably, I mean, as it stands right now, we're going to come out of this meeting with no definition as to what we're really doing with this. We're just going to have more discussion. And everyone out in the community is going to be like, on a string of this. It, and that's, if we can't make that, it, it, we, we can have that discussion without it being something that is agitating to the community, unnecessarily so, the overwhelming majority of the community, by saying, okay, that's not on the table, right? If the board would say, we're not looking to get rid of the red rate, right? We could have this discussion and everyone would be fine. Let's let's engage, let's talk about this. But as long as people feel as though the possibility is there, then by not saying that it isn't it, it, it is on it, it, it's off the table, people aren't going to want to hear this discussion that we're talking about. A lot a lot of people just are not going to be able to hear this higher discussion people are trying to uh, float out there. Um, and I, I just I am the complete opposite. I do believe it's celebratory, the Red Raider. No one calls our athletic team something that is mocking or negative in nature. You know, throughout all of this, the most important thing to our parents has been the safety and education of their students, but the thing people have been most passionate about has been their athletics. People take that seriously. And it is celebratory toward the Red Raider, Native Americans, it's always been the case. So it's a positive in its intention, and it's a positive by my personal viewpoint. We'll look at it differently. I, I understand that. But my position in fighting this is fighting on behalf of the community, and also I just don't get it. I don't see this as, in, as the issue that people want to make it out. And if it would, were to reach that point, it would, be, it would be hurtful to a lot of people unnecessarily. Again, I, I'm using the word cruel a lot. But it also, if we didn't have that, this whole discussion of Native Americans, two, three years down the line, would be gone. And never again would Native Americans be a consideration for the district. That's just the reality. So it's the cancel culture in regard to potentially erasing our memory, our, our, our you know, our having a care for the people who came before us, as well as being hurtful toward the people within our community. So. I just, and, and if we're just having a discussion, like, again, we've had, this is our third special meeting on this. So we're talking about having more special Just to be able to say, okay, well, we're going to do more education in regards to Native Americans. Again, while we have other things that we're just not addressing that we need to be addressed, specifically with the elements, it, it's just disproportionate and weird, frankly, unless the, the big decision is what's on the table. So, you know, I, I don't I don't imagine the board's gonna say, you know what, that makes sense, okay, we're gonna let people know that's off the table. 
I, I seriously doubt that's going to be the outcome of this. But just know what is being proposed here today is just flat metered. And it's something that is unsettling to the community because something that is important and means a lot to them is on the line that we're just dangling that way. Thank you, Mr. Snyder. Right, anything else? Um, and moving forward, um, Mr. Gazart, I think we kind of agree that we should have more public input. And I was just hoping that when we do so, that we can have some rules or some focus uh, questions. When you present, could you please speak to this? And I think that would maybe keep from happening what he had said. Let's not just rehash on for it, I'm against it. Maybe that's just because otherwise we'll probably just We're sit here and move on. I just want to, I want to just say exactly. to Jeff, um, Jeff, this is why I think this is how I see it differently, which right. I probably have already stated in public. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I, I guess I agree with that. I mean, I guess what we need to figure out. And what, it, what, what do we want to have answered? What do we want to, the question to be responded to? So just keep in mind, like we can set the tone and we can set right. the framework, but we can't tell people how to respond. So no, we can suggest if yeah. you please speak to this. Absolutely. Right. right. And then I guess about the majority and the minority, you know, I've thought a lot about that, but I think as, as a public school teacher, um, if there is even a portion of your student population that is not being served properly, who might need accommodations. We might say, well, the majority of us, my students don't need accommodations. But if there is even our five kids, or 10 kids, or 17% or 30% of the students who have a problem, we can't say, sorry, the rest of us are okay with it. Not saying what side I'm on, but I'm just in the habit of thinking of, because we're a public school, we have to make sure that we are kind and inclusive of everyone. So I think that's just what I wanted to respond to you about the majority and the, the minority. It might not necessarily work in this case. And if you can indulge me, I, I, I was really searching for, well, who said, again, not necessarily saying where I land because I'm really for a compromise. But who said that the Native American mascot is harmful? Was that your question? Like you said, it's weird. Like who said, who said, I'm just clarifying your question. But your question, why is it, why do people view it as something? I don't mind interpreting your. When I said weird? Yeah. No, weird is us continuing to have this discussion. Oh, okay, okay. That's weird to the community. Why are we having this discussion if it isn't just going to end up resulting okay. in getting rid of the Red Raider? Like, why are we dragging it out and having all these discussions and all this? It's just a simple, all we got to say is, okay, we're going to do a better job of educating on not on, on this. Like, why do we continue to have to have a private meeting or a work sessions and all of that to have this discussion? Like, we're stringing it out and making it weird for people if we're not taking it off the table or not. That's what's weird about it. Well, it, it, earlier today, I, I, I was just looking around for, and I don't know if this is getting into too much of the weeds, but I can say this list open, very quickly. Open discussion, please okay. feel free. Um, who, what group, what, whose official position is that a Native American mascot might not be the best, might be harmful? So I'm going to read this list just, just pointing that it's not necessarily cancel culture. Um, the Modern Language Association has gone on the record as saying that maybe Native American mascots such as this might not be the most, or can be harmful. Um, the NAACP, the American Psychological Association, American Anthropological Association, the American Sociological Association, the NACI, which is the oldest, largest um, national or Native American organization in the country, the ACLU, the Anti-Defamation League, the Rainbow Coalition, the Quakers, the United Methodist Church, the United Church of Christ, the Presbyterian Church, the Southern Christian Leadership, Unitarian Universalist Church, um, 
state laws against it are in California, Maine, Oregon, Wisconsin, proposed in Illinois, Massachusetts, and Nebraska, and Washington. So I was just looking for, is this something that we're dream, not dreaming up, but are, is there legitimacy here? And based on that list, um, oh, and the National Education Association, I, I think if there's legitimacy in the question. Um, yeah, just a couple things. Um, I do, I would like to know the why uh, from both sides. Why, why is it that you think it should not be changed or why do you think it's offensive? To me, that's important um, to know that. Um, I would kind of want to echo back to what Donna said about having the courage to do this and also what Julie said about how it's been pushed down the line, pushed down the line, pushed down the line. It takes a lot to have this discussion. I mean, it's very controversial. Um, you know, we have some people that want to keep it. We have some people that would like to be changed. And it takes courage for us as elected officials to have the discussion. Um, I've gotten so many emails, people saying, well, you're not going to get reelected if you continue this discussion. I got upset about that. But then I said, well, I'm elected. I have, I have the courage to represent the people that would like to have this discussion. And if I don't get reelected because of it, then so be it. But I have to do what I feel is right for everybody to continue the discussion. I agree with what Jeff said. You know, we're having this discussion because we would like to come to some kind of decision, whatever it may be. Um, I mean, at this point, I'm just rambling, but I think I think it takes courage to have this and to, to move forward with it. Yeah, I, I I don't want to repeat what everybody else has said, but I do think if you look at our history here in Belfont and our history even in terms of civil rights, um, you know, we have the Underground Railroad that ran through here. I'm sure there were varying opinions um, at those times and, and, and um, integrated school. I'm sure there were, there were varying opinions at, the, at those times. I'm not sure where the majority stood or the minority stood on those opinions, but it was, there was divisiveness. And, and I think Belfont found a way to kind of lead the way and, and set, set an example. I'm hoping we can do that here too. I think that um, one of the things when we talk about inclusiveness and being an open and inclusive community, I don't necessarily think that majority rules means that you're an open and inclusive community. And so, you, that's fine if you're in the majority, but if you're not, that sends a message to those that aren't in the majority. And, um, and so I think when I look at what our ID committee is trying to say and what we tried to, to um, espouse in our, our resolution that we worked hard on um, is that we want to be open and inviting to everyone. We're listening to everyone. And that's where I think this is important. So it's not like, yeah, we'll listen to you and we agree with you, but you know, when we disagree, we're gonna get our we're gonna get our way. You know what I mean? And I think that that and, and that's why I think that it's important for us to to explore these issues. And it may take time. And I mean, I I don't know what's on the table or what's off the table. And I don't think it would be fair to make that determination on this outright. And I hope that people that are listening understand that we are trying to look at these issues from all different perspectives and hear different perspectives and try to understand different ways that we might be able to build consensus around this issue. Um, and so I think it's, um, you know, I mean, I think that, that it, it's important that we have that transparency rather than saying, you know, we're gonna do this and that's, you know, the only, only way that we can consider this issue. Um, I think that's the responsible thing to do and hopefully people understand, you know, kind of the, 
the information that we're trying to seek and how we are proceeding with this, this um, you know, discussion, the, the next steps, so that um, even if they may not agree with, even if they may not agree with whatever decision, whichever side kind of, you know, feels that they prevail, you know, that, that they understand how it was made, you know, what the found foundational principles of that decision were. So, I think it's more, <laughs> more of the same, I think, what everybody's saying, but I do think that, that it is important um, and it, to kind of, to, to, to look at that, these issues. Okay. The only divisiveness I have is trying to decide whether we're on a snow day or not. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, there's never an easy answer to that either. That's all I have to add. And you have people, and you have people that are happy with you, and people that aren't happy. Oh, with I've you. heard from both sides. Yes, I heard. I heard great screams this morning of joy. So I have to tell you. Thank you. I personally, yes, you've done a great job. With thank, that you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so trying to, uh, I'm glad that we're having the conversation. We need to have this conversation. I believe me. There's a hundred things I'd rather be doing, uh, potentially, on, instead of attending a lot of special meetings, but. Um, we're having the conversation. I think we made some progress tonight. Some of it was venting, which we all needed to do. Um, and some of it was presenting ideas. Uh, I would like to go around just one more time and just ask people what you would like to see as next steps forward. And it doesn't have to be a conversation. It can just be word out an idea, whatever. What I'm hearing so far, we're talking about um, potentially adding some data and resources that's accessible. Uh, identifying various cultures in our community, which probably falls back to a demographics for administration. Uh, creating some sort of a framework for representation to identify what the real issues are and come up with positive solutions on how to positively reinforce the various cultures in our community. Um, that maybe doesn't address this specific issue, but I think it, it falls in line with the discussion. Um, I'm hearing that the possibility of phasing out an image to prevent uh, other outside groups from bringing something in while we're in the middle of things. I, I heard that. Uh, I do think it's important for us to review legal precedent that's already been uh, litigated in our state, uh, just so that we know, so that we're not trying to push an idea that is seen as really wrong ethically or legally. Uh, we need to educate ourselves on that and we need to make sure that we, I gotta find a way, I think we should present that to the community in some way some condensed version of, is there something, anything that we're doing that was identified in that report as not appropriate, we should make that known to the community and then we should take immediate action to stop that, whatever that is. Uh, if it's already been litigated and tried in court, I don't think we want to be trying to reinvent the wheel here. So um, I'm also hearing that, uh, well, of course, we've already had some work on the resolution on equity. Um, that'll be coming forward. I do, I'm hearing that we need to continue to encourage and support our IDE committee. They're gonna be a, a key a group moving forward and um, hearing that we need to identify for the public a framework of what we're looking for, try to give your presentation to answer this set of questions or something like that to, to offer positive solutions. Uh, knowing that some of you will still need to vent and, and we get that, we'll endure, but um, let's, let's try to vent and then move forward positive way, whatever that means. So um, again, we are having this meeting because we cannot have private discussions as a group. So it is necessary for us, this is the only place that we can talk as a group to move forward. Uh, and, and that's one of the things that we are doing here. So uh, I don't see us as pushing things down the line. I see us, I like the comment about, um, uh, you can sort of give a framework for a timeline, but as long as you're making meaningful progress, we just have to agree on what meaningful progress is so that we're not looking like we're attacking each other. Um, so with that, that's what I've heard so far. Let's make another trip around the table. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to add to that list for next steps? I'd just like to remind you that I would like to see something at the next meeting, some kind of report from the leadership, perhaps of how you would like to frame, frame the next presentation or whatever it may be. In other words, you're there to help guide us a little bit through these discussions. I do agree with Jeff, who's 
who's going to listen to all of this, who's willing to go to the web pages that we may provide. I am not hopeful. I am simply not hopeful. Um, it's one of those issues where people get angry if it gets changed. And if they're not really provided the information on why it's been changed, then it just won't. I'll give an example. Miami of Ohio University changed their mascot from the Redskins, I guess it's been about 20 years ago, to the Red Hawks, I believe. And so when you talk to, they did an interview, it was in the Washington Post. So when you talk to the current students, they talked to one of the fellows, uh, and some of the older alums were around and they were still talking about Redskins and stuff. And the co-ed said, they're so cute. Because what happens is over time, people, people adjust. It's the ones who are older and will resist. If that's what it comes to in the future, it's just not going to go away. That music, it's just the way it is. So I would like to I would just simply like the leadership to come up with some recommendation but I would like to see it. I don't want this to drag out. I simply don't. I would like to have at least two of these kind of meetings a month, if possible. But also, at our regular meetings, at least be apprised or have questions as to where we would like to go. And perhaps limit that discussion to like 15 minutes. Or so. I've, been a, I've been on uh, uh, committees and other things, even at the county level, where we said we started the meeting at seven o'clock we're going to end it at nine and we got a lot done in that last half hour <laughs> now i'm suggesting that we put a time limit on the discussion at the regular meetings to try to, to move it on so in other words you would have cut me off two minutes ago That's all. so just to answer that a little bit <clears throat> one of the problems with at a voting meeting, having this on the agenda. I know. We okay. have discussion. Yeah, and then who's going to be the one to tell, oh, well, I'm sorry, so you five got to speak, but now the rest of you 15, sorry, you'll have to come to another meeting. All right. And that's I, what we're, that's. I understand. Hang on a second. So, the, so that's what I'm trying to avoid. Right. I, I, well, I, the other I, option, John, I'm sorry. To no, go ahead. It's okay. The other option is to have the regular meeting adjourn go into a 20 minute work session. Well, and that's, so, and that's not unheard of. That's what I'm talking about. That's it needs to be correct. a separate meeting for the purpose of public input. It would be, well, I'm saying the work session itself would not require the public input. Yeah, or, or for the purpose of further discussion, we could do that as well. Yeah. Yes, no, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mrs. Weaver, anything else as far as uh, next steps moving forward? Uh, just to make sure that uh, we definitely have at least two meetings for the public and to make sure that their voices are heard. I, I couldn't agree more and, and I'm also of the belief that if it takes three to have everyone who wants to speak, then that's what we need to do. Thank you. Um, Dr. Badger. Yep. Same sure. as Mrs. Weaver. Just... Mr. Steiner, anything else? Said my piece. Ms. Smith? Just thinking about rules for public discourse and polite discussion, maybe somewhere a good reminder because that's super important. Okay. I echo what Donna said. I, I think at some point we'll also have to think about what those public session, comment sessions, how they're structured given our environment. Um, I, I think when we can see people in person, it's it's I mean more favorable than than online um, and 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 perhaps more accessible for folks. Um, although maybe some there might be risk for some. With I mean I, I don't know what's going to happen in the next few months, but I think at some point that is a discussion that we may need to have. And I like I like the idea of a possible work session after yeah. a regular meeting. I mean 
that's what I was trying to figure out when we looked at thinking about canceling tonight's meeting. It's like, why would we want to meet on Wednesday if we're meeting on Tuesday? But um, yeah, I, I, I think that that could be very possible. I also um, am curious about who, who gets to decide what resources go up on the website or those resources, who's, if, if we need to, are we vetting any of those? Are we, are we letting people figure those out them, themselves? I mean, so I mean, that's something too that, that I think, I think it's, the more information we can get out, the better. I will just say, um, and I'm not promoting or, or not promoting the idea. I'm just saying that if we are to put a link to a website on our page, that website needs to be fully vetted yep. for appropriateness. Um, I don't know who would do that or what that would right. look like. You know, I'd defer to the administration. Exactly. It's, it's something they, they're engaged in, but uh, that's just one thing to consider. Uh, Ms. Bernard, anything? I don't know. Okay. Ms. Bernard, a lot of them are in. Yeah. <laughs> we'll send it to you. So, our country. let me just say that if anybody, uh, uh, and we check with uh, our solicitor on this. As long as there's no back and forth, if someone has, maybe you have an idea for what that framework would look like, okay? There is no harm in sending that to the administration or sending it to board leadership as a piece of information. Don't expect a response. Don't send it to the, all the members. Just send it in as a tool for consideration. There's no problem with that. If you want to hold it and have the discussion, you know, whatever you send would just help the discussion when we do have it in public there would be no discussion behind the scenes. So it would just help maybe save a little time when we do get to public discussion. And so, if we find a source, maybe that could be presented the same way? Yeah, absolutely. That, you're allowed to give information. We're not allowed to collaborate. So I don't want people to uh, live in fear of sharing useful information if you can limit it to just sharing information and not discussion. And John, if you could kind of reiterate for the public that we don't hold sessions in private. I've seen that so many times that we're I know we talking behind closed doors and so it's trying to keep true. them trying to keep the meeting positive and not wanting to point some of that stuff out. But just to reiterate, there are no private sessions. We are not allowed to meet in executive session to discuss this matter. We're not allowed to meet in through email or phone calls uh, as a quorum to discuss this matter. And we don't and we have not which is why you hear some of the venting that you hear here this evening, because oh, there's a lot of stuff, just pent up energy that people need to get off their chest. And you heard some of that this evening. Trust me, it's, it's all being done in public meetings. And once we feel that we can set the framework and the tone, you will, if you want to speak, you will have that opportunity. I don't feel comfortable saying, well, we can only have two sessions for public input because we've heard enough. We're not gonna do that. If, if people want to continue to come in and offer input, uh, we'll have three, four, five sessions if that's what it takes until people are done talking. Uh, hopefully we can make it a lot less venting and a lot more uh, solution oriented. That's the best I can say at this point. So uh, again, if you're viewing this later, this will be posted on our website as a resource, uh, just like the other work sessions have. And uh, I think we have enough information moving forward that we can have a discussion on how to approach this either at the next meeting or what the next steps are. So thank you everybody. Please go home safely. Um, Kim, you're already home. Good job. <laughs> and uh, uh, just travel safely. Uh, sorry for making us come here in the snow. So will that we entertain a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Being adjourned. Thank you. I think that's going on Saturday for lunch.